y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 83 of the 100 Days of Zen Tangle Project 2020. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. We've just got 17 more days left in our project, but don't worry, anybody. I am still going to be making uploads several times a week, and we're all still going to be hanging out together regularly. Okay, so today's tangle is African Artist. It is by the same Tangler uh, CZT, Tina Hunziker, that we did yesterday with our pattern Buen Camino. And uh, this pattern has fascinated me for a long time. It is dense looking. It is a cool uh, fill pattern, and you can also use it as a border. So uh, let me step this out for you on this bijou tile. This is my version of doing borders and dots in a straight way. Sort of just put them all in there together. I sometimes have better luck <laughs> that way than with the dots. That's a personal issue, though. Okay, so this is based on an OG grid that's spelled O-G-E-E, -E, I believe, and I hope I'm saying it right because I am not a big, uh, I don't have a lot of knowledge about grids, but um, I, I uh, know that this involves these wavy lines that uh, you do in opposite of each other, and... so that in between them we're going to have these sort of elongated oval orb type things so what we're going to do is we're going to fill these in with a pattern that is very similar to the tangle garlic cloves if you're familiar with that one that's a zentangle original pattern i believe uh don't don't hate me if i got that wrong Okay, so you're just going to fill the area that you want to use with these uh, alternating wavy lines so that you have the orb shapes. Okay, and then the thin spots in between. And the next step then is to, to um, connect these two sides with a line and then make a little echo line above it. Now, this part can cause issues for people and so I just want you to watch uh, what I'm doing here you're gonna shift your tile so that these go opposite directions each time and you're going to look at these curves look at the curves and whoops goodness look at the curves and then uh, try to divide them with these little um, this little echoed pair and remember to turn your tile each time so that each column is pointing in a different direction now this part is is kind of difficult if you're not familiar with this type of division but you will run into this uh, type of thing in patterns a lot and so it's a really good thing to practice. And I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed or confused on this. This pattern is going to be a little bit more challenging than what we do. But we've already done the hardest part. Right? So watch this part again if this confuses you. And we're going to do a tile so you'll see me do it several more times. The next step is to go down there where these two come together and round these corners off. What we're basically doing is we're turning these middle, these middle orbish shapes into more orbish. So we're taking off the points where those are and we're going to round them up so that each one of those uh, little fat spots there are going to be uh, more like orbs and less like uh, ovals. Making those middle shapes more roundish and less ovally. If that helps you, I'm not sure it does. These remind me of Christmas lights when the, without the fill part in there. 
It's just me. These would be pretty, wouldn't they? It's those little ovaly shapes. Now, when I draw my fill pattern in uh, with the lines, it's going to be, um, there's going to be more of this rounding involved. I'll find places where I just want to take off a little bit more of it and that type of thing. So uh, these are very intuitive and you can really do them and shape them according to what what your um, initial lines bring you. And I think one of the reasons I felt this was too challenging for me and why I failed at it uh, before when I tried it was because I was overthinking this pattern. It's, it's actually quite simple. Uh, just a few steps and um, some aura lines. And um, it looks really beautiful and dense and so it's one of my favorite things um, to look at but I have never uh, had the courage to really go at it. I've tried it a couple of times several years back and was not successful with it but as many things have over the last year um, my perspective on it has changed quite a bit and I actually did not find it that difficult this time. So I am hoping that uh, I can help you guys sort of get over that uh, concern. So when you get finished, this is what we're going to have. And you might want to go through if some of them are just weirdly shaped and do your rounding a little bit more. But the next step then is to start in this orb shape and put a straightish line in the middle. And then you're going to radiate out these little aura or echo lines. They could really go either way. Now, I... I am fairly messy in this process, and some of you are going to be able to do a much neater job, but this is the basic uh, point. You start with a center line, and because these are orb-like, then I go ahead and uh, put a slight curve in it. I try to get in tune with what the shape of the curve might be in each particular one, and then sort of flow with that. So get in touch with the curves on this and see where they lead you. Now the last step to this, and I think I put this in before I go further, is to add little hatch marks going across the division, uh, little division lines here. And that sort of reemphasizes that you've got an opposite moving thing and it also reemphasizes the connection between the two orbs. And you'll notice my center lines are frequently not straight. They are curved according to how I think the lines would flow with this space best. But we're basically going to put a straightish one down the center. And then on each side, we're going to um, aura out words uh, following the curve of the edge. And it's really not hard. You might need to practice this some. But this is really not hard. A straight line down the center and then curved lines moving outwards on each side. And the great thing about this pattern is it's got so much going on that if you are having a tough time with your lines today, and I'm having a terrible time with shaking today, if you watch some of these you can see my hand shaking. Um, <clears throat> I choose to ignore that for the most part, but you might notice it. But the great thing about this is my lines can be weak and wavy all they want to, and this is still going to look extraordinarily cool when we're done. So I am just going in there and getting these lines in and letting the, the space sort of dictate how I'm going to put my center line in. And then uh, once finished, you know, it's going to look amazing, however your lines are. So if you guys can be brave enough to try this with me, then I think those of you that shake will really like this because these lines do not care whether they're shaky. They're still going to look really cool in a tile, on a tile, in a string, uh, or as a border, or whatever way you would like to use this. This has been one of my favorite patterns to look at for years and uh, never had the courage to really face it and conquer it. So I'm kind of proud of myself that I was able to draw this in uh, fairly and, and really get in tune with it and understand it the way that I was today. And I'm hoping 
that uh, as you guys follow along, you will start to enjoy this too. This is very reminiscent for me of the way that pinochle is drawn, only, you know, with different shapes. And so um, I'm really enjoying this, and I love how dense it is and how uh, intricate it looks. And so um, the shading is also pretty simple, where the, where the lines come against each other, and that includes um, where they converge down at the bottom, and if they the sides of the orbs touch each other, then you're going to want to pick one that's on top of the other and shade the shade the one that's on the bottom. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. And see right there is a good example of choosing which side is going to be on top and then shading the other one. And there again, we've done that. So what I'm doing by adding graphite at the top and the bottom of these is is uh, giving it even more sense that these things, uh, these orb shapes are rounded and puffed out. And uh, on my tile, I'm going to use a gray tile and I'm going to be able to put white charcoal in as the highlight on the center of these and that with the graphite deepening the color on the ends and the highlight in the middle that's going to look really dynamic i think at least i hope so i'm ever hopeful i want to apologize to you guys that i have been so um out of it lately i've been really tired the weather being hot really affects me negatively and I am trying to keep my chin up and uh, keep positive. And so I really appreciate you when you guys leave me positive comments and, and uh, encouraging words. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm not really too concerned about uh, the graphite part. It serves its purpose as long as, as it deepens, deepens the look of the ends of these. And again, you don't really see how dark I'm shading it because of the, gray, uh, the graying effect of the light but uh, it really does help this to look pretty dynamic. But honestly, you can go without shading on this pattern. Uh, the converging lines does a lot of the work for you. This is just the prettiest thing, isn't it? I like it. I, I have a feeling you guys is it, aren't going to make this very popular, but I really like this. So if you, that is the step out. And if you would like to join me to create a tile today, I'm going to be using a gray tan, whoa, a gray toned tile. And I'm going to start today with a string in traditional fashion, or not a string, or maybe a border. With me, my border and string are the same thing many times. I'm definitely going to put a Maria Thomas loop in here. Because I love my Maria Thomas look loops. An otherwise normal tile might become dynamic because you leave that space blank. Or fill it in. You just never know. And you can always ignore it. So I've got a vaguely squarish type shape with lots of wavy lines on the borders and a, and a big loop in the middle. And I'm going to be using my PN, my Micron Pigma, my Pigma Micron PN. I'm all turned around today. And I'm going to start by filling this in and trying to um, respect the border line so that uh, I have a neat effect on the edge. And I'm going to start by putting in my OG grid, which just basically means, means wavy lines and, that mirror each other. Just like this. And, you know, when your string gets weird, just, just start with the, the lines that you've got drawn in and go up and down from there if that's what you need to do. There's my string line. So now I've got to figure out how to do this. It's a little skewed, but it's going to be fine. There 
and yeah, out and in. There we go. <laughs> I knew I could get it. Oh, 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 Simba's awake. It's okay, Sim. Let's save our, let's save our, let's save our barking for a minute from now, buddy. Someone must have walked on our lawn. It's very upsetting. Very upsetting for him. <laughs> Particularly if they walk their dogs across. That's very upsetting. Mostly because he's jealous. He wants to be out there with them. We went for a walk this morning with the Simba. Me and Caden and Simba. Or Simba, Caden, and I. And uh, that was nice. Nobody yelled at us. Nobody called the police. So that's a win for us. Now here again, I'm drawing my initial dividing line and I'm trying to work with the curve. And then as I switch columns, I am switching the direction that I fill this in. Okay, then shifting my tile again and I'm going with the curve of the lines. I'm not forcing it. I'm trying to draw, make a natural flowing division here. If you can, if you can see it, I didn't quite get it there, but... <laughs> There we go, that's better. Just go with what is there. Don't let it bother you too much. Remember, all there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on and you don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. It's all gonna work out. <coughs> Just remember to shift your tile and change direction on each column. Okay, now I'm going to draw that little sort of echo line in there. And I'm going to give it a little room, just make a little divider there that I can put those hatch marks in. It doesn't have to be big. Just curve it out a little bit and then curve it back in. Curve out, curve in. Take off and land. Whoops. <laughs> That was a little more landing than I was wanting there, but there you go. It happens. And again, this is a very forgiving pattern. It does not mind if you make snafus, have stray lines, and all of that stuff, because it's all going to get pulled together, and it's all going to look cool. Just take off and land for these. Make that little echo line. Follow the curve that you've got there. And in my case, imagine the curve. And shift your tile. Go the other way. This is not hard, so don't let it be hard. Don't allow yourself to get psyched out by this. It looks complex, but just follow the steps. And here we're going to start with our center line. And then just, just aura it out from there. So you've got a nice, densely filled little orb shape. Oops, I forgot my rounding, didn't I? I may round as I go. It sometimes happens to me when I do grid patterns. I just sort of work from, you know. I try not to do that on these videos because I don't want to confuse anybody. But, um, you know, there you go. So center line mostly straight or, you know, contour it with your orb shape. And then radiate lines out from there. Again, this is like the Zentangle Pattern Garlic Clothes, which is one of my very favorite fill patterns because of this very effect. It looks so cool. It's very dense and it's very 3D and I like those qualities. Apparently, I'm going to round as I go here. 
very bad form, forgive me. And it is very easy to round as you go on this. Don't worry if you feel like you make a big mess with your rounding. Again, this pattern is going to forgive you for that. One of the things I really like about it. So one of your rounding spots is a little dark. Nobody is going to be seeing that. They're going to see the overall coolness of the pattern. And it is really cool. Oh, what's up, Simba? Simba barfed. He barfed. It sounded like he did. Oh, I think he just I think he just burped or gurgled or something. So, see there, that was a bit of a mess, but trust me, the pattern will not care. And these are the patterns that we tend to go to a lot because they are good to us <laughs> while we draw them. That no matter if they are poorly drawn or not, they still work well for us. And that's awesome. I have finally figured out a way to uh, do comments and do this at the same time, and that is uh, by doing a voiceover like I'm doing today. So that works out. Okay, so a lot of you liked Buen Camino. Hi to Gail Stringer and Sheila Salone, Silon, Salone. Sorry about that, Eileen Tallula. Thank you guys for leaving comments yesterday. Marietta DeWitt, hi, and thank you for your comment. Lynn Gotham thought that was a lot of work. Boy, it was. It felt like a lot of work yesterday. I have, I have not... You know, if I felt like it was work, which I apologize for because I feel like some of that is me. Shout out to Diane Jameson for saving my butt again the other day. <laughs> It's so sweet that Marietta is in Holland is so concerned about me. That is so nice of you. Ah, Mary Andrews is going to make seashells out of her Buen Camino. I like that idea. That is awesome. Oh, here's a good comment on the Tangle Vine that we did. Gwen Simmons asks, why not white instead of brown and sepia? We definitely could do white. And uh, I may I may drag out that I've been thinking about a black tile for us to do soon. So if you guys want to source something black, and if you're really um, if you're really in a place where you cannot um, get some a black tile or black paper to use, you can use a marker like a sharpie or something like that, and black a tile or black some hot press watercolor paper or whatever you got and tangle over that. Just uh, make sure that it's completely dry before you add anything to it. Okay, um, if you have uh, the cheaper type of paper, uh, that might be a bit problematic. But for most types of cardstock and such, this should work. And uh, backs of your cereal box will black very easily. So if you want to source some of that from the house, you can do that. <laughs> 
Oh, Alice Harvey left some really good uh, comments on nice. Let's see. She actually has some good ideas here about wide stripes. Let's see. I like that. On the second tile, before you added the dots around the edge, this looked like a beach ball that was slightly out of air. I like it. Yeah, I, I kind of like that too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh goodness. All right. Shout out to Mary Jordan. All right. It didn't tell me which one that that must have been on nice. So. Oh, okay. Um DMB left a message on the finery pattern that said I should have my thyroid checked because uh, she was having horrible shaking hands and had hyperthyroid. Um, I Just so you know, I do have that and I am on medication for that. So thank you for that comment. That was awesome. Ha <laughs> ha. Sheila liked the idea of filling in on trefoil with the inking, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Hi, Linda Fieldman, or Feldman, sorry. Oh, Dana Janice, I'm sorry my music was a little bit too loud. Sometimes when, sometimes when I've got the music playing for you guys in the background uh, and I'm not talking or doing anything, then I like to crank it up and then I'm sometimes umming and humming and, you know, muttering under my breath the way I do, and which is not a good habit. And uh, so I do apologize for that being too loud that day. And I'm going to be sad that this project is going to be over soon, too. <laughs> oh. Joni Shepard saying she wishes her lines would meet up perfectly like mine. She is so cute, isn't she? She needs to watch more of these videos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Hi to Tracy Nichols and my sweet Annette Dirksen. Hi, guys. Hello to all my guys in Canada. Nancy Payne. If you need to get in touch with me, then you can get me by email at the tireless dangler at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for all of the awesome, awesome comments. I've got a ton more to get through. But I really like this voiceover thing so I can talk to you guys more freely without the umming and aahing. All right. Gwen Simmons left a, a comment on Heart Heartily that said she loves the pattern... And yes, her recently purchased microns are not waterproof. Immediately after laying the ink down, maybe we need to heat set it or let it dry for 30 seconds. That's awesome. Good idea. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I did back when I was doing the uh, videos for um, the Dingbats project. I did one, a pattern called Jester, which may or may not pop up here in the next uh, few days, uh, which I just adore this pattern. And she, Shanna said, uh, the Jester Tangle looks like something out of Whoville. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's a great comment. All right. M. Fernandez says, my nickname is Mel Mel. That's a good nickname. She was commenting on the Mel Mel Tangle. She checked out her blog, and she means uh, Del Bruno's blog at Tickle to Tangle. And uh, for the first time, she penciled a small orb first and got it the first time. I've only been tangling two days, and I'm enjoying your lessons very much. Mahalo. She must live in Hawaii. Thank you to Mel Mel Fernandez. <gasps> 
Aww. Boys, Makai left me a, a comment two days ago on one of my videos on trefoil. Yeah, I told him to. Nice. He got a like and a comment and a shout out in this video. That is my grandbaby, Makai. He is my Sean's son, other son, Caden's brother. We don't get to see him very often. And he left me a comment on one of my videos, which is pretty awesome. All right. So let me get back to what we're doing here. I'm having a little bit too much fun talking to you guys. So now I'm going to take my pencil and start darkening the ends of these little orbs. Remember, we just want to shadow those to enhance the look of roundness. Which, on this tangle, is perfectly fine. You can pretty much sculpt these the way that you want them once you get them drawn in. Uh, that is the beauty of the pattern, I think. Again, I'm going to hit uh, both sides of these orbs. Apparently, I'm doing the bottoms first today. I'm wondering when I'm going to switch. You can tell Makai got a shout out in tomorrow's video. I used to call Makai Makoodles when he was a baby. It was so cute. I did? He's the cutest kid ever. Did I do that? No, that was Makai. Okay. Okay, so this is a gray tile, so I'm going to, after I blend out my graphite, I'm going to add my white charcoal pencil along the uh, middles of each of these orbs, and that will really pop things out, hopefully. <laughs> Make it look good, hopefully. Turned out pretty good. And adding the graphite just rounds them up a little bit. And I'm adding it on both the top and the bottom, just like in the step out. This makes it even more dynamic. And as always, I will be doing more passes on shading once I get this blended out. I usually do that off camera because it just, it's time consuming and it takes too much time to do it all on camera. So just blend it out, but leave most of the color in the points at the bottom and top. Oh, 
And like I said, you may want to go over it more than once with your pencil. You know, when you blend something, you're moving the graphite around, but that leaves less graphite in the places where you might want it most. That's why more than one shading run is nice. And of course, for your last step, adding your chop. And this is where I'm gonna leave you guys today. Even if you have made a mess of your lines, even if you've made mistakes, this still turns out great. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'm going to see you tomorrow.